Coming up in today's video, we're going to do a deep dive into the charging speed and also the charging metrics of the newly refreshed Model S, including not only the Plaid variant, but also the long range version as well. And as we do this, we're also going to compare this to Tesla's other electric sedan, the Model 3, as well as two other electric sedans that are coming out right now that have an 800 volt plus architecture, the Lucid Air, and also the new Ionic 5 from Hyundai. So without further ado, let's dive in. Motor Trend recently got their hands on the new Plaid Model S and took it to a V3 supercharger to see if it really lives up to Tesla's claims, and according to their initial tests, it appears like Tesla's estimates are accurate. According to Tesla, in 15 minutes of charging at a V3 supercharger, the long range Model S can add around 200 miles of range. The Motor Trend article that we're going to be referencing throughout this video mentioned that the Plaid version can add around 187 miles of range in that same 15 minutes. With all the changes that Tesla made to the newly refreshed Model S, including the improved 18650 cells, this now makes the Model S the fastest charging Tesla when it comes to how many miles that can be added per minute of charging. And while these facts are really impressive, this only tells part of the story. There are many different ways that you can look at and compare the charging speed of an electric vehicle. Commonly, you'll see comparisons of the time it takes to go, for instance, from a 10% state of charge to, say, an 80% state of charge. However, giving just a simple percentage increase without the context of range really isn't very helpful. For example, the Porsche Taycan Turbo S has an EPA rated range of just 201 miles. Going from a 10% to 80% state of charge really only represents adding around 141 miles of driving range. Whereas going from a 10% to 80% state of charge in the long range Model S with 405 miles of range represents an increase of around 284 miles, which is roughly double of the miles of range added per minute of charging for the Taycan. So it's not percentage that matters, it's actual drivable range that is added per minute of charging that really matters. The long range Model S would have to take twice as long as the Porsche Taycan to go from a 10% to 80% state of charge in order for the miles added per minute of charging to be equal. Inside EVs recently put out an article that built upon the Plaid Model S charging results that were published by Motor Trend, and they further analyzed the Motor Trend data and added in some of their own tests to provide a more complete picture of the new Model S charging speed. They also included charging data for the new Hyundai Ionic 5, which has an 800 volt architecture as tested in Europe by the YouTube channel Battery Life. I highly recommend that you go over and read the Inside EVs article and also the Motor Trend article because they dive into more details than I'm going to discuss in this video. And I'll make sure that I put a link to both of those articles in the description of the video. If you've been enjoying this video so far, please remember to click that like button. And if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. Here's a chart created by Inside EVs that illustrates the charging curve for the Plaid Model S as tested by Motor Trend. As you can see, the new Model S battery pack was able to receive the full 250 kilowatts from a V3 supercharger from between a 10% state of charge to about a 30% state of charge before the rate began to taper off. The Motor Trend article also mentioned that it took around five minutes for the Plaid Model S to go from a 10% to 30% state of charge which according to my basic math would equate to around 78 miles of range being added in that five minute period or a rate of 15.6 miles added per minute. If the 250 kilowatts and the miles of range added per minute were able to be sustained for a longer period of time, this would represent 936 miles of range added per hour. The new long range Model S at that same sustained rate should add around 16.2 miles of range per minute during that five minute period at 250 kilowatts, which if this was sustained would equate out to 972 miles of range per hour. Now this is of course very impressive, but how does this compare to the Tesla Model 3, Tesla's other sedan? Thankfully, this Inside EVs article written by Mark Kane that I've been referencing also included data from other charging tests for the Model 3 and also for the new Hyundai Ionic 5. Also, since the Plaid Model S has the same exact battery pack as the long range version of the Model S, they extrapolated the results 
from the Plaid Model S into what they would look like for the long range version of the Model S. And they talked about this in terms of how long it takes for each of these vehicles to go from a 20% state of charge to an 80% state of charge. As you can see from this Inside EVs chart, the 2021 Plaid and Long Range Model S should be able to go from a 20% state of charge to an 80% state of charge in around 27 minutes. This is of course slightly slower than both of the Model 3s they previously tested. The European spec all-wheel drive Ionic 5, according to the YouTube channel Battery Life, is able to achieve that same 20% to 80% state of charge at an Ionity charger in just 15 minutes. However, keep in mind that the Model S has a much bigger battery pack around 100 kilowatt hours, so this percentage increase represents a larger kilowatt hour increase. This 15 minutes from 20 to 80 percent is of course significantly faster than both the Model 3 and the Model S. However, as I mentioned earlier, the percentage is really just part of the story. We need to add in the context of range, so now we're going to do that and take a second look at these numbers. Unfortunately, we don't have the WLTP range estimates for the Model S yet. We only have the EPA estimates. And when it comes to the Ionic 5, we only have the WLTP estimates. So because of that, this is not going to be a completely fair apples to apples comparison. However, nonetheless, with the information that I do have, I believe this will still give us, when we add the context of range, a good picture of how these vehicles actually compare in real world practical use. As you can see illustrated on this chart, the Ionic 5 is able to add more range per minute of charging than the new Model S. However, the difference is not as large as the percentage versus time comparison that we did earlier. Also, the WLTP charge cycle is usually more generous than the EPA test cycle. So once we have the new Model S WLTP numbers, the difference could be even less. Also, although this is not a fair apples to apples comparison, if you do take a look at time only and forget the percentages for a minute, in its sweet spot, in ideal situations, a 15 minute charge in the Model S, as we mentioned earlier, can add up to 200 miles of range, which is more than the Ionic 5 in the 15 minutes it took to go from a 20% state of charge to an 80% state of charge. Now I do want to make it really clear that I'm not trying to downplay the charging speeds of the new Ionic 5. They are very impressive. However, I believe this comparison that we've done with the Model S when we add the context of miles added per minute of charging, I believe it shows the value of a very efficient long range electric vehicle and how that actually improves the practical real world miles of range added per minute. It helps close the gap between even a vehicle that charges a little faster technically. So far in this video, we've compared the Model S charging times to two vehicles that are in a completely different price class. The Model 3 is of course much cheaper than the Model S, and the Ionic 5 is also much cheaper than the Model S as well. I'd like to now move over to a more similarly priced vehicle, the Lucid Air, and talk about how the Plaid Model S and the Long Range Model S charging speeds compare to the Lucid Air. In a perfect world, we would have a very efficient long range EV with an 800 volt architecture, which would allow not only for a high charge rate, but also would equate to a high amount of range being added per minute of charging. Although the Lucid Air has not yet been delivered to any customers, it does appear like when it does come in a few months, it's going to be very impressive when it comes to not only efficiency, range, but also charging speed. We're going to dive into a charging speed comparison of the Lucid Air to the Plaid Model S, but before we do that, I do want to step back just for a second and talk about how volts, amps, and kilowatts are related when it comes to charging. When we talk about a Tesla V3 supercharger that can charge at up to 250 kilowatts, this is a measurement of power. The number of watts that a supercharger puts out can be calculated by multiplying the volts times the amps. And do note that there are two ways to achieve the same amount of power. In charging scenario one, we have 400 volts being supplied at 625 amps, and that equates to 250 kilowatts of power. In charging scenario two, we have 800 volts being supplied at 312.5 amps, and that also equals 250 kilowatts of power. Notice that an 800 volt system would be able to charge at that same 250 kilowatt rate while drawing half the number of amps. In order to understand the benefits of being able to charge at the same rate with a lower 
amp rating, I found this AutoCar article which explains it very well. They said, to increase the power in watts that an EV system can deliver or the charge it can accept, either the voltage or the current, which is amperage, needs to be increased. The problem with using a higher current is that it requires bigger, heavier cables with thicker insulation and it generates more heat. So the alternative is to increase the voltage instead, hence the introduction of 800 volt electrical architecture by Porsche. Increasing the system's power allows both higher performance and faster charging. Now I do plan in a future video to dive way more into depth into the whole 400 volt versus 800 volt conversation. So do let me know in the comments if that's something that you'd like to see a more in-depth video about. But for now, I'd like to talk about the Lucid Air charging speed as an example of an efficient EV with a high voltage system coupled with a long range. According to Lucid, their luxury sedan, the Air, has a 900 volt charging system and they plan to sell two variants of this vehicle with over 500 miles of estimated range. This 500 plus miles of range is achieved with only a 113 kilowatt hour pack. So this vehicle definitely checks the efficiency box. And when you combine this all together with a state of the art thermal management system that Lucid has built into the air, this makes for a vehicle that is not only very efficient, but it leads to very fast charging as well. According to Lucid's website, the air should be able to add up to 300 miles of range in a 20 minute charge. And since 300 miles is approximately 60% of a 500 mile range car, this could represent charging a Lucid Air from a 20% state of charge to an 80% state of charge. With this assumption, it allows us to compare the Lucid charge times directly to the previous examples we have discussed, which will help add context and give a more complete picture of just how impressive these numbers really are. As you can see in this chart, the Lucid Air should be able to add around 15 miles of range per minute in a 20 minute charge, which is quite a bit more than even the impressive Ionic 5 and the new Model S. Now in the future video that I hope to do about 400 volt versus 800 volt, I plan to talk a lot about why I believe Tesla has not yet switched over to an 800 volt system. And while right now I'm not gonna go into great depth about this comparison, I did wanna make one side note about this whole 400 volts versus 800 volt conversation. While Electrify America in the United States and Ionity in Europe are deploying quite a few 800 volt chargers, these chargers are still a minority. These new 800 plus volt EVs can still charge on these lower voltage chargers. However, at a lower voltage, they're not going to be able to benefit from the 800 volt capability at least when it comes to the charging benefits. I guess what I'm trying to convey is that you can have the fastest charging car in the world, but on a trip, if you're unable to find chargers to take advantage of the 800 volt plus capability, you have no real advantage in charging speed. Also, Tesla's new 4680 batteries may make an 800 volt upgrade and all the added costs that go with that unnecessary for some time. Well, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed everything that we've talked about. I would like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters that support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community and how to support my work, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.